being able to proceed or drive today. We're not finished putting the revetment on in, call our backhoe at Dodge. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put the delineators up and open it up in the morning. So uh, we've got the rock on the tank. The tank's in the dirt, covered with rock today, and we'll open it up the track in the morning. When are you going to try to overlay? Overlay? Oh, all three trucks down there, that'd be more than enough to do it, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Might be enough to go somewhere down that other road. I want to make a suggestion. On the next tank car we do, I want us to get the machine and do it ourselves. Period. Have had that a lot quicker. We're going to talk about that. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about getting my car ahead of my horse. That's all right. I got we one already other, I don't have that on my scale on mine. Okay? Go ahead. I got one other item that uh, y'all can discuss it, but uh, the storage containers that we've purchased, the fire department has opposed to purchase them from us. So whenever y'all get ready to declare them surplus or uh, turn them over to them, they'll cut the check for them and we'll call them to us. Yep. So please. I think that would be a good idea, Monday. Put that on the agenda. I had a note to ask But I, but I did give them a price of 14250 Yeah, they said they paid exactly That's what, what we paid for. That's what we paid for. But, and, and the reason is, by the time we pay for that engineer to come from the state and determine the structural integrity of those containers, we don't know, according to the engineers I spoke to, we're looking at six to $8,000 to get that analysis. Plus the length of time it takes to get it done. No, I believe in that. Now, while we were trying to. We, yeah, and we went by what another parish had done, and then we come to find out that parish now theirs is in question. So, um, I, cost wise, we can't afford to be the guinea pig. Yeah. Um, well, it cost us some time, but I'm glad it got caught when it got caught before we put them over there. Right. So, you know, and, and that's what has actually prolonged things a little bit too. Has uh, the state been by with that? No, I haven't sent a letter yet. Okay. Uh, now that we, as soon as I've opened up, I will take pictures and uh, I'll write a letter and get here. Are we going to be able to take that bridge out of the program? Yes. That's going to be our bridge from now on. But it won't even be a bridge anymore. Well, I'm but right now, technically, we could leave it in there and maybe get a bridge one of these days, but you're still going to have them coming back every two years and expecting that site. I, I, I just am not that. But well, I guess if they put a concrete pillar, then. Well, they probably would at some point, but where we're at right now uh, with the federal government, yeah. after the car across from here, we're $1.2 million in debt with the federal government. Every we're year, well, we're not right, right, but that still keeps us from getting money out of the bridge problem. Okay. And they said that's a possibility that will go on for the next 20 years. Can you open that back up here before you inspect it? Yes. Anytime that they show up on site and they give us the opportunity to close it ourselves, we can open it up on the own. <laughs> So can I touch on something that Bobby said? Uh, Bobby brought up a point about uh, on Nashville Bay. Um, something that I'm, I'm waiting on uh, some numbers from Doggy, John Deere, um, to give me some numbers on leasing a machine. It's going to tie into something else. I know you'll get into it in a minute too. But. There's a possibility we could lease a machine to try. Uh, 
situation to be in to try it for 12 months than lock yourself in a 48 month purchase. If we pick it back right now off of a purchase from someone that has done it through the state, they gave me a number of around $188,000. Well, if we got $50,000 for a surplus machine, we put it on there, that's $138,000, and by the time we finance it out over four years, looking at a whole lot more than $11,000, $1,200. And you're going to have interest, and you got to buy the extended warranty, and we're responsible for all the oil changes, all the maintenance on it. And then the warranty doesn't necessarily, just because it's under warranty, no man covers everything, because it's not going to cover the time of labor or the travel time to come to fix it when it's down on the side of the road where it's been working. So those are the hidden costs that you don't often think about but they can be significant over a four-year period of the machine. But <clears throat> is something like that covered on the lease? Yes. Yeah. I like that. I mean, we wouldn't be responsible for labor, travel, nothing. I mean, the only thing we're responsible for is a wear out. <clears throat> now, if we go out there and we track that machine up and down the road, riding around, we wear the undercarriage out, yeah, we're going to pay for an undercarriage when we turn it in. Yeah, we ain't gonna but we're not going to do that. <clears throat> they'll load it up on that low boy driving down the road or they'll be looking for a job. 
faith in the Lord, the Lord will not, the Lord will And then we get us a new one every 12 months. That's right. Um, I looked at two little boys yesterday, Stephen Gar's guy, he, and he wants uh, 12, 5, he wants 10, 5. Uh, 35, 35 tons? It, it's two back for me. 35 tons. The, the only thing we've got now, that, what is it? I don't have one. We can rent one. Oh. Well, the uh, 35 ton haul that we have? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll, it'll haul the 160. Yeah, yeah the 160 you don't weigh but about 45,000 pounds. Yeah. It won't haul the 210, brother. No. No. Well, and then, see, so if you go to that size, you got to buy a drop deck. You get the drop deck, you're looking at yeah. a good used one, 35, 40,000, brand new one, 85, 90. And that's that's not what we want to be. But the uh, ten to twelve thousand for a good use low boy, I mean you can put a whole new axle springs and everything uh, down at Bayer Manufacturing. You can do that for less than five grand. Is that a tight trailer? Yeah. Yeah, low boy trailer. Let me ask you this, will one sixty be better than what was over there? Oh I'm waiting. Oh the, the 160 is, is we, we used to have, we had a track of several years ago that the jury leased, and it was a 590. Well, they went to metric uh, numbers on, and they, that 590 we had is the 169. Okay. Uh, the machine got a, a one yard sucking on it, and it'll do almost anything you want to do. Well, let me give you some of the cost of what, like one guy, he wanted $20,000 to come out there and do that because that's the right. $20,000. Mm -hmm. Well, that would have paid for this machine a year and a half, 15, 15 months. Yeah. Oh, uh, so uh, with that in mind, that's what we've been, you know, we've been kind of handcuffed because we didn't have that option. And then uh, John Deere just, John Deere just came out with this program this last month. It hadn't been long. Yeah, last month they, up, they began offering it and man, the parishes are jumping at it because mm -hmm. everybody's in the same situation. If you think about, give me an example, our graders. I'm going to put ahead of you here. We got two graders right now. The notes on them are $2,631.98 for one, $2,641.80 for the other. They offer the same deal on a grader. Now, we're at least purchasing these graders, which means after four years, we're going to still have a small balloon note. But these, uh, they all offer the same. We're, we're responsible for all the maintenance. If we do have warranty, but we have to pay for the time, travel, and labor. They offer the same program now. So you could take and reduce that greater cost, which we're leasing, just like that one we're proposing to sell. Is it, what, six years old? Mm, no, I think it's about eight. Eight, yeah, we thought it was the first year. It's eight years old. Almost eight. Almost eight, yeah. Almost seven seven and a half years old but a thousand dollars a month and ever <coughs> well no i'm sorry a thousand to eleven hundred dollars depending on how many we purchase at one time give an example uh, i don't want to name the parish but a sister parish that joins twin parish you got five of them their price was a thousand dollars a month in the 12 months they turn all five of them in and get five new one thing we're responsible for uh, is the wire out, board, tires, wire, wire fixing. <coughs> you know, that's the only things at the end of that 12 month period that we would have to financially uh, replace if they're determined to be too far more. This program just got out. Just started last yeah. month. Now, you're talking about reducing our monthly cost. We're paying for uh, four graders now, three. Two. Two. Two, uh, two paid off. Okay. Three, three, three paid off. The one you want to do for seven months, two others that are paid off. Okay. Well, for the $5,200 we're paying right now for two, you can buy five. Now, you ain't got the people to operate them, but the point to that is if you reduce the cost of your graders, that savings in cost each month would justify the employment of an additional person. Now, if you do that with four graders, 
and you save sixteen hundred dollars a month per grader, you're talking about forty eight hundred dollars a month savings. You can hire two people. Still have the same cost we've been operating on right now, and you'd have four graders that you're not responsible for any of the maintenance on, not even the PM work. And in a year, turn them all back in and have two additional employees. And this is before the tax. This has got nothing to do with the tax. Right? That tax can't be spent on equipment anyhow. So just take that tax completely out of the picture. This is based on revenue that we were already operating on. Now, one of the problems we've had is we only have seven employees that actively can go out and build a machine every day. So if we have four graders, two bush hogs, a backhoe, a, two, a back wing, pothole patcher, and three dump trucks, we don't even have enough people to operate those machines. So when people say, why am I grass pit bush hog? Okay, well, let's pull the man off pothole patcher and put him on a bush hog. Yeah. Well, okay, now he's doing pothole patcher. It's, it's been a, we've had to balance that for so long. But, if, if, and we can do this at any time, and if there's any equity in any of our machines, they're paid for. And since those other two are also paid for, we can sell them as surplus. You take that money, you can put those dollars in the bank. I mean, it's just so much more, those two that's paid for above and beyond the one that I'm proposing we serve, put up for surplus Monday night. Let's get the numbers from Dogger. See what those numbers are under that lease program. And uh, come back next. You just, you, it, does everybody understand where I'm at? Yeah. I mean, it's a, and I'm not saying. Um, after a year, yeah. they'll do it again next year. Next year, you get. I wanted to ask you about the same question. You feel like that program is going to stay with Dr. Cool. Well, with John Deere, they're saying it is. They said they do it. Well, they said what the. Uh, well, you'll be right back in. Go back into a lease program or purchase. Yeah. Yeah. You said we won't have three we'll machines. Have three paid. paid machines on. I like, the, I like the idea. I do too. Well, yeah, but you're not necessarily, the only thing you'd have to change is if they did, let's say two years from now they did away with the program, but you'd have to lay off the two employees, and go back and repurchase those equipment, you'd still be operating at the same revenue that we've been operating under for the last eight years. Yeah. So nothing in that aspect would change. Yes, you would terminate two employees. You're back to the way it was. You'd be back paying for those machines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, like when it rains, I, I'm beating you up here, but I don't understand why that side boom's not rolling down the blacktop road. Uh, that side boom, it don't have to have dry weather to operate. That side boom should never be steep. Uh, now, if this rain is straight down lightning, hey, I ain't got a problem with my operating. Uh, I don't think it'd be smart to do it. But if it's not raining, that side boom should have a man on it. And if he can't get down the gravel road, that's fine. There's plenty of black top roads he could reach out there. And if he can't find one, I'll give him a list of one. But, we don't have, I'll pick up just where we're at. We don't have a one side boom. We had two of those. But solving one problem of getting an excavator, because we got more uh, bridges, tanks to place immediately. I mean, that's. We need to do that, uh, and we can't act on that until we get some numbers. And we have a the better job than Beaver Dam, but that track though. Do we have the tanks for back to that again? No, that's another thing I wanted to ask because these tanks, uh, the people that we're dealing with, we get them extremely reasonable, and 
I need to tell him as soon as possible you need to look for him two more. Well, I'd say go ahead and put it on the agenda. Are we going to put three in out there or two? Just two. Oh, you know the lengths that you need? The yeah. diamond? Right, yeah, we're, we're going to get some right. dogs. Probably nine right. or 50 right. or 50 right. dollars right. worth the longest he can get. Hey, uh, don't forget to put me on there, too, Karen. But I got to catch on here again. Yeah. Got to require a graveyard load. Two tank cars for Three. I thought you said three. Mm -hmm. You said two. Yeah, that, that creek there is not as big as the one that we just got through with. I thought it was bigger. It's deeper. Yeah. 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 It's deeper, but it's not near as wide. What about the one out there? I'll break it. Well, we're going to have to look. And, and that's what I'm kind of banking on this excavator because I'd like to get it. And do the pack and other road I can see because I, that irritated me to no end that little yeah. bit hey, of shin over here. That one day they worked over there used 35 gallons of hot dog oil. Yeah. 35 <laughs> fire, gallons. I'd fire somebody if they got on my dog. Who used it? Yeah, I'm not a good guy. Contractor. Uh, there's a What's that machine the guy you can over Oh, there's enough revenue in there now to do that. Which low boy you want for 10, 5 or 12? The 12, 5 the, the longest. Was it 42 or 45? I'd I didn't measure that. He just told me that. And I went up there and looked, and he told me one was longer than the other. Now, one got ran from one don't, but the, the longer one had a better looking do a pay on. Yeah, I, I like ramps better. Yeah, what, well, what happened with ramps on it? This oh. one don't have ramps? No. The other one does, but I just don't like the look of it. Yeah. But it, it don't cost a lot to put ramps on it. It's a lot easier to load the track machine when you got ramps. You don't slip as much. So make a motion first. Low four, four or five. Um, no, we don't have to do anything on the way to get the numbers from the dog on the excavator for sure. And then on um, the graders also. Well, you could use the low boy now. We already rent one. Every time we rent one, what's it cost? It's just a hundred fifty dollars a, a trip. One trip to Alexandria, go down there, drop it, <coughs> and go back and pick it up. We charge a hundred twenty-five hundred fifty. Yeah, I know, I know Ray gets it straight. Right, that's exactly right. And it kind when we did uh, rent a tricot, we kept it for the whole time we had the tricot too, and he charged a different rate. And we kept it.
you go in there and you spray you a good coat of oil down, you put this C3 gravel over the top of it, and you're resealing your old road so you're getting the water out of it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what's going to save your life. That's, a, that, that's probably in the neighborhood of like our pothole rock. Uh, he hadn't gave me a definite size, but you know, uh, and, and if you want to do a two shot, they said the only time they do a two shot is like if they're going to do a gravel road that's never been done before. Uh, they'll use that C2 on the bottom. Well, if you do it on the Highway 34 end, which is the best end of it, and that's the nearest end closest to Jackson Parish, you probably see the most benefit from it. I think so. So what's the minimal amount we can do without having to get into the pit? 20,000? 30. 30. Do you know that? There's not but one company in the state of Louisiana that does it. If know, that's all it is, then we can, I know it's only one of them. I think, I, I think there's a possibility that we, if the guy at BM has told me that he's going to call Greer contracting himself and speak on our behalf, and maybe we can keep them back off their contract and that's a possibility we might be doing the whole road. But uh, at least you get that uh, thirty thousand dollars to get their price. Yeah. Well let me ask But if we can piggyback off of theirs, well then that bypasses the state bid law. That's right. Um, and you can do it if you want. Well I mean I would just think it would be kind of ridiculous not to do the whole road. But, I mean, but another thing, as people right, wouldn't understand, they're, yeah. they, they're not yeah. going to understand that we could only spend and do one and I mean, have a bit of it in two miles. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, you and we don't have, have too many places in there that, you know, as bad as you might have to put a little hot mix on there, there's not many of those places like that. That's not one that hurt. Well, right there where the sideward road comes out, it's probably. The worst little place because it's, every time the water gets up, it goes across the road right there. there. Is that where that clear cut is? No. That curve and that clear cut there is what I'm talking about. Well, the road right there close to that past the side of the road. Yeah. 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 There's a clear cut and you go into that curve. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's up right around Celsius. Uh, yeah. Further up, yeah. About, about 30 miles to all the road. Well, and I'm sure they would rather do that. But see, let, let me mention one other thing to you. They want our people to do it. Well, that's right. But what you need to consider also is be in last winter. They prepped these roads for this summer. Uh, they're actually repairing their roads a year before. That way that contractor comes in and he don't have to wait on me. Yeah. And chip seal has a season. You chip seal from around May, uh, April to May until September. And those months in between, they say it's just a no-go because it will not hold up. But do we have time to get it ready? Well, I think for them to come do us a test, I think they will, and we do have enough time. Uh, their biggest thing, if, if they get their rock out of Elgin, it's going to be a little different because when they go to Malvern, they, they ordered uh, back in January 10,000 tons for being. And they have to pre order all the gravel and stuff, and that's another reason, you know, they like to know way ahead of time what they're going to do. But being they're going to have to get their rock from a different source, it may be a different ball game. But I'll also mention one other thing to you. Little Brothers, you, we, we got two loads of number eight for our pothole packer yesterday. That's going to be it for that river down there. Because the uh, red river's up in their yard. And I think they had about four loads of number eight when we got those two left yesterday. Yeah. So they, they don't prepare the base of the road. No, no. You prepare the road, and 
and then whenever they beat it, they beat it where they call the rock to your side. And then what they like to do is that they want to close the whole road because they're going to come down and they're going to do full width spray. And then they're going to spread that gravel at the same time. And all their equipment, they're, they're computerized, so no matter how much rock they dump in that machine, that computer is just going to let it put out just so much at a time. So it's going to be an even, even core. So what do you know about the people that on the road? Well, we would just have to let them know ahead of time. You know, it, it don't take long. As soon as that uh, sprayer gets by them, if they're in the driveway, they can come on out. It's just through traffic we're going to have to hold up. And they, and they do it all the time in the end of it. They said the job goes a whole lot quicker that way. You don't have any center lines in the road whenever they get done. What do you say to prepare the road before that one? Well, that entails if, if you got dips or, or that you have to dig out, put iron ore in, and, and maybe take hot mix and level back up, that, that's, that's so what I'm like doing. What, what would you do there? In the well, let me ask you this. That's a, that's a hard question because that road is coming apart. Now, yeah. now we're talking about doing blacktops. Do they do their dirt in Fianville like they do their blacktops? Well, what I was wondering if it was like Border Jackson Parish, if it, we were going to experiment with a dirt road, what about the Derby Road? I, I think the Derby Road too far gone. But that's what, un that's unfortunately, what the engineer said too. That unfortunately, we'll that's that, work yeah, we'll get into that a little bit further. But the engineer told me that too. He said Durban Road was too far gone. Right. He said you couldn't even chip so there. You know, I, I think once once I get, I, I'm making that all y'all a list of uh, exactly how many uh, blacktop roads you have versus gravel, and uh, I started working on it today. Well, actually yesterday. But whenever I get it, I can give y'all a copy of it, and then you can look. And y'all need to go look at these places. Uh, I, that, there's a lot more roads we can do that to than, than we probably think. Well, and also, uh, like, I know Virginia's on this list here, but if for some reason you couldn't get funding for it, uh, I talked to Ken about that also, and he said, all they do is they go in and all the loose gravel on the road, they roll it up and pick it all up and get it out of the way. And then if, if you go by state spec, you're supposed to put a primer coat on it. But he says, you know, that's a lot of cost and no rock. You just get a, a tar cover on your road. Uh, they uh, put down the CRS2 like we always use and then put a uh, either the chip seal or the two cores on it. And most of the time he said he recommends, you know, especially on a gravel road that you took a rock off of it to do a two cores on because it'll, it'll hold it better. And I guess we'll always have a lot of garbage trucks on it. So that's only way we'll be able to preserve them. Yeah, let me uh, give it a good test. That, that, that leads us into something else. On your, in your folder, uh, the engineer prepared, these are roads that uh, we've got some calls, we've got the square yards, the miles, things and all that. These are roads and calls we had talked about taking approximately one third of the proposed estimated calls. I mean, I'm sorry. One third of the estimated revenue to be generated from the half city <coughs> tax and doing a bond issue uh, for the 10 year period of the tax and completely starting from scratch. Uh, these numbers would include uh, soil cement, going in, milling up what's there, soil cementing coming back with uh, three inches of uh, asphalt, I believe. And uh, the reason we did like, for an example, on the first page, you 
you see uh, there's five proposed roads. Now that's not ones we got to do. That was just, I mean, you can see there's a whole list of roads. Uh, Durban Spillway, Gum Springs, Woodland Ridge, Virginia, Welcome Home, Thomas Mill, Mill Wagner, Mars Hill. Mars Hill? How in the world is Mars Hill? You know? How did you get down there so low? I had it on top of her. <laughs> Mosley, Mosley Drive, Collins Camp, Old Alexandria, and uh, Ed Carpenter. Now, if, like I said, all this, you see, it says example. Sample project budget. If we did the Durban Road, the Durban Road would cost us $951,280 in today's cost. Today is as low as it's been in eight years because of interest rates, uh, fuel cost, car, and oil is cheaper right now than it's been. So, uh, you can see, and if you'll flip over to the third page, begins a breakdown of each road. These are roads that we've had on capital outlay request for, well, for I know the eight years I've been here. And uh, that's why the engineer took and went and performed the road estimates. Uh, and we can move, but the goal is, for example, you gotta figure what the interest rate would be. So we know two, three years ago, the library did a 10-year bond loan, a bond, they asked for a 10-year bond, but it was a loan based on their millage that they, they knew they would receive for 10 years. Uh, the interest rate they got was 2.02. .02. Now we based ours off of three, which was high, but not high by any means, but I want to be higher than what the library was because I don't know if that's what we'll get. But I know after talking to state officials, uh, right now is the lowest bond rate that there's really ever been. So it's the perfect time to do a project like this. Very um, new, uh, the Emble, but I'm on Jackson Parish, they just renewed their half cent sales tax. I mean, they've already got this. They started a year ago because they had the money. They knew the revenue was coming up to be proposed. So they had everything in place. So as soon as that tax was voted back in, they jumped on it. They already went to the bond commission and they're doing their $3 million. Now, we're not actually doing $3 million, but what we're trying to account for is the interest, the cost of the interest. And let's say if it was 3%, you see at the very bottom. In order to cap the yearly debt service at 300000 which is one-third of the proposed, I'm sorry, one-third of the estimated revenue that's going to be generated, the total project cost must be limited to roughly $2,600,000. That would be assuming a 10-year uh, loan amortized at 3%. So you can't actually spend $3 million because you got to account for the interest that we're going to have to pay to do those. Now, you said, well, what's the benefits of doing a uh, $2.6 million project? Now, if the interest rate came in at, for example, 2.02, .02, we could do about $100,000 to $150,000 more work for it, which, for an example, would, you'll look at, uh, Virginia Street after the chip settlement, that would be almost enough to go ahead and uh, soil cement. And you see that, it's got it in there. Uh, soil cement and overlay it. I mean, everything being done, 149000 So, depending on the interest rate, you could have possibly pick, and there's several roads, not just Virginia. Uh, Woodland Ridge, Old Alexander. I mean, those are all, those, those are three roads that would just about, we'd have to draw a straw. See who would get that between District 4, District 7, and District 6. We'll go with 
<laughs> so that's why I said somebody get the straws and cut them off. We draw straws, but anyway, point being, if the interest rate's low enough, that can influence us being able to do another road. So those, my proposal is, those are three roads that you just kind of have to leave in that road until you see what the interest rate can be. But I'm not saying don't do one, but that's some. Those are things that would have to be hashed out. Now, the reason I have asked so much and pushed so much about the Durban Road, I mean, I'd love to pick one in District 4, but we've already paid for four cars to be repaired on the Durban Road this year already. But we're averaging one car a month that's being damaged and we're going to put by that with the top of the So if you factor the cost that we're paying that, factor what we're constantly spending on that road just to catch it. Uh, and then to know that if you permanently replace it for 25 years you wouldn't have to you should not have to spend time uh, we would be doing the same thing in essence to the Durban Road that they did to the Jelman Road I say Jelman it's not actually Jelman it's all it's the old Tandy Hill Highway Arkland, Jailwind, I mean, nobody likes to call it either one, but Arkland is that or the Jail. The reason why I call it Jailwind is because the state calls it the Jailwind Road Project. Yeah. But technically it's the Tandy Hill Road, but for example, that was soil seeding And if everybody knew that was gumbo ground. Some of the ground with these other roads are better than that. Some of them are just the same. But they soil cemented and then they put the same amount of asphalt and the state engineers projected that road to last 25 years. And that's with that big truck track. You see, that's all that's really on this big truck. Mm -hmm. You have the employees that come in there, but other than that, it's tanker trucks coming in and out all day, and flatbeds and chip trucks coming in out of jail. So, the best, I thought the best bang for your buck. The best dollar value is to completely reconstruct the Durban Road. Um, and y'all can see all the other roads. And, uh, you take somebody like me, I mean, I feel they only got one or two roads in that old. Well, what about this? Yeah. What about Don Simon? Jack, you know, you know, it was real bad. Yeah, it's in there. I mean, it's, yeah. yeah. But you want to cut all that out completely. Yeah, it would be. All, all these, oh, yeah. turn to that third page. Oh, on the third page at yeah. the bottom, yeah, I see it right here. it's got the soil cement base. Just the soil cement, that's 285,000. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're looking at 739,000 just to do that. So if you put Gum Springs and Durban, which is like on that, and you're already at 1.6, 1.7 million dollars. Now, the other part of that is, you've got the peak road that <coughs> also are not going to ever get capital out of I mean, the other purpose of that tax when we sold it to the public was that if we had our 25% matching funds, then when we go to the state and request that capital outlay, we would have the, the funding to even ask for because you can't ask for it you got in the bank and can show them proof. Just what that letter, that email I got. They want to see proof again. Yeah. So we still got the money to complete the project we started three years ago. Yeah. They want to know that we didn't spend it. Yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're really here picking up $350,000 and you're sitting over here just to get a million. And you say, well, that's not 25%. It is by the state's uh, accounting. Because they divide it by 0.75. I don't know why you wouldn't subtract, but I multiply it, but they divide comes out and then by the time they have their fees and services it's 353000 Anyway, point being, uh, when that proposal was made, we got to find those roads. Gun Springs Road. More than likely, it would have a very difficult because uh, not enough on traffic volume. Yes, it may be high, but we put restrictions on that road so it's limited the traffic volume on it. Uh, there's no business. 
it is a present but not not like the country club it, it, it's a different and when you start measuring the traffic volume and basing what that traffic volume is you know club road we can have no restrictions on it really loaded long truck that went down to club road any time now we've done something about that but, uh, all these roads are loaded. Every travel, business, and so forth is stopped. Yeah, it's been done three or four different times. Now, the reason I asked you to look at Thomas Mill is we go right, right now and look at uh, the Rains. <coughs> uh, the best proposal, cost wise, that we can come up with that we, you know, we talked about asking the state to take it in. Uh, that's not going to happen. I've talked to DOTD, talked about swapping it. I mean, it just, everybody's seen it on TV, their budget. I'm not saying that can't change in six or seven years, but, I mean, if I had a crystal ball, I could tell you what was going to happen. I would be sitting but I don't. But if you take the uh, Thomas Road, now that was actually put in two layers of asphalt on top of what we got because it's got a good base. It's been soil cemented. It's been already got nearly three or four inches of asphalt. But if you went back with two two inch overlays, put four more inches of asphalt on. And then built up beside that, not a full width shoulder, but you're going to build up the edge to meet that. And so that's only four inches, but it's going to keep that. Even at the heaviest rainfall, you know, it never really came completely over the road and got up on it. But you had four inches to the road and build up the edge of the shoulder. <coughs> uh, yeah, I mean, because we couldn't afford to buy property rights for people to mine that road and buy out the utilities. But we don't have that kind of uh, And even the capital outlay, they're not going to give us that kind of money to buy property rights. And you move the utilities. <coughs> Whenever they do their business, Jack, what are they doing with the material? What do we do? I mean, we just so, so, if you say, for instance, if when we do beautiful, yeah. the smartest thing would be to catch them roads off of it. Where yeah. You know, then that way the contractor ain't going to have to haul all the way back to Winfield. And, and yeah, I mean, you catch those roads that, right there that. Well, if you go to Beulah and it flies off to the right, that's a dirt road. Yeah. Right there at the road. church. Yeah. Is that still Beulah? Well, the black top is the black top is Beulah all the way around twelve thirty. Right there at the church, Beulah Church Road. Goes out to the right. Right. That's the right. Yeah, it goes out to twelve thirty. I mean it would only make sense to drive a lift. Yeah, but you gotta understand that's where all the wrecks went on that government area right there. But he, but he didn't go on the church road. There was no government land in there? No. That ain't government. A little mail route? Yeah. From, from, from uh, Jamestown? Yeah. Back to, back out to 472. Jamestown was a coon ain't government? No. <coughs> there's their stop right there at Jamestown. But the point being, I mean, there yeah. should be enough uh, bill to ask for to talk to that to. Y'all be able to cover every road out there. I mean, you're talking three and a half, four miles of mill, almost four miles of mill, all the way down to the dirt. Now, they'll, they'll leave some like they did on the front, but well, they're going to put sea in too, yeah. but they'll, they'll leave some of what, they what they're going to do whenever they start milling. They're just going to try to level yeah. the road. Well, that today, though. Well, yeah, but that's, that's you know, coming up with roads to put that on is not a problem. Well, I, I was just want to make sure that you know we're going to get the material back and be able to use. I mean, if you can bring that material over to the district, oh, I have no problem. Mind you, I've got no problem. I've probably need something. Well, whenever they do the dirt road, road, that's going to be a you, yeah. Would you have right a road, right. certain road up there in District 4 that would need some of it? Well, I mean, I, but yeah, I do. But I kind of thought that you 
Call it Douglas Gary, brother. What about 477? That good finish card. Cutting it up. We're going to get into that. We're going to get uh, about 350 yards. See, that'd be good. Man. I'm gonna just but I'm, I'm planning on trying to catch that and do some of them roads down there. Yeah. We can't buy 10 more from them down there? Well, that'd be between us and the contract. Well, it should be real close, though, because 477, I got about like 35 to 50 dollars. I, I don't know how much they're hard, Jack. I know one time that they, their parishes were buying for 14. Do you yeah. realize how much 350 yards is? Uh, I mean, that's going to pretty much take care of. <coughs> they're going a long way in the St. Maurice community. Yeah, it's about two roads down there. They bring some of that to set. But, you know, you yeah. put, put four inches on a 14 foot road, that's going to go a long way. Jackson Parish was buying it for a contract. Last year, well, they didn't know that they were getting 1750 of it. How did they start with 1650? Whenever they mailed it from this whole line, Jack's parents bought every bit of it and stopped buying it. They brought their truck and they loaded it up. We just sent some more to you tonight. Well, I mean, you can look into that. I mean, you can contact BOTD and find out. Oh. Or I guess the contractor. Probably, you probably have to go to the contractor and see what he's going to do. It, it, it's a possibility now. They got to where on a lot of those little off-system roads, like well, it's not off-system, but they're small on-system roads that a lot of times they're using now for the shoulder thing. So that may be what their intentions are on it. But but around the other hand, they may be willing to. Yeah, I mean I'm not against that bill. Well, since it was right there, you know, I mean, District 4 ain't but a couple of miles yeah, down the road. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. I don't we, we can share it. Over here. We can uh -huh. share it. I don't want to hear it over here. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> Four, seven, seven, it's only about seven miles, so we, we can share it. Cut through the wood. <laughs> That's a road man. Go, go right down Lake George. Get there. <laughs> I don't care how you get there. Just get there. <laughs> go by Mr. Hawkins' house. Talk about the thing getting okay then. Um, <laughs> but look at these and, and understand that. And then uh, we, we need to have another meeting after everybody's had time to look at this. I mean, we even put. For example, Neil Wagner. The reason I asked I, I, I asked Henry to put Neil Wagner on there was because you know we are the city is doing all their part of Neil Wagner. We use capital outlay. We amended the scope of a project off of the Country Club Road when those prices came in less than what we initially anticipated. We were able to do from where the city is stopping at the city limits all the way to the railroad tracks. Well, we didn't have enough money to finish it, and it would cost $45,720 to finish Neil Wagner Drive. So it would be kind of foolish of us not to pick up at the railroad tracks and complete it all the way to 67. <coughs> what they do, once again, reiterate that. In two years, we don't have to go back and do that. I've got a couple claims on Neil Wagner. Well, so, I mean, <coughs> yes, for you know, it just that, that also influences that tax, I mean, I'm sorry, that interest rate. You know, if we get the right interest rate, that, that just reunifies why we need to do some of that. Uh, isn't here, so I'm speaking for her, um, without talking to her. <laughs> and I know she, she may have another road, and if she does, it's fine. I know we, we are not <coughs> going to probably be able to do a road out of each district, so let's just prepare ourselves for that. Verify. I mean, it's just not going to be enough money. Um, and it may mean the district forward doesn't get a road. Not that we're picking on District 4, but there may be a road in District 4 that have a better chance of getting capital out of that far. Or maybe a road in, in District uh, 
three that I haven't had a chance to. But the reason I asked, uh, which Spillway Road, we had had it on the capital outlay request for years. And uh, the reason I push it is because of the amount of through traffic, it's like when that bridge was out, uh, that gets directed through there. It's pretty good traffic. You start getting that big truck traffic on there. That road is just like the third. You, you just, there's nothing left there. I mean, there's nothing left there. We talked about uh, ship sailing, but it just doesn't make sense financially. So, I mean, that's, that's not in my district, but I, I still believe, I mean, I'd love to go up there and do that in Cocker Road. I mean, if you look at the price, it's the very last run on only 265,000 folks. I'm not sure to do that for me and Mr. Pope. I mean, come on. I'm giving Mr. Earl a million dollars, giving Philip over here 762000 Plus, he wants all the millions off of that 477. I couldn't be sure we should. I'm talking about being greedy. Hey, that ain't no problem. He wants his cake and ice and too. Next year, you can give it back to him. And Bobby getting uh, Bueller Road plus all the millions off of it. Next year. You give it back to us. <laughs> but get my drift. I got you, yeah. brother. I got you. I hope I can. I hope you can. I hope I get the opportunity to do that. But uh, I can't count on that. And uh, neither can the jury. That's true. Um, there's two, there's two, there's two and a half other parishes that have to vote in that. And I got to get one parish to vote too. The three and a half pounds. <laughs> yeah. You got mine. Oh. Oh, <laughs> so this may influence your vote. Let me say it can be bought. <laughs> I mean, what's your ethics violation? <laughs> uh, in all in all reality, yeah, being serious, it's uh, it gives you some things to look at, some dollar figures. I mean, it's also, like I said, it's not that, I said, you know, it may be that way because if you look at, just for the example, project budget, and there's not a road on that in my district. And I, I mean, I'm okay with that. I understand it. I'm not, I don't have ill feelings about it. Um, if that's one of the proposed projects, People in my district might have a problem with it, but you know, it's uh, it's not about district four, it's not about district five, it's about which roads are we having the most claims and has the most traffic and is going to benefit the jury as a whole the most. Uh, try to keep that in mind and leave your personal feelings out of it. Personally, I'd do every road in my district and I'd give y'all nothing if I thought I could do it. But I, I know I can't do it. Um, but I appreciate the honesty of knowing how you feel about the rest of us. You're going to give the time. That's, uh, that's all I have. But the reason, like I said, I want to get that is because of to get the ball rolling because of things you're not going to see any of this work again in the month. So it's not like you're going to do this, get this out there, go to the bond commission, get all this approved, get it out there, get it out for bid, get the loan and everything done. You're not going to do that in a few months. This, this is going to be a project that will begin with us that's sitting here today and then the next jury six months we'll have to pick it up and finish it. But it's not a project to wait six months to begin. Because then you're already, if we wait six months and put it off for a new jury to begin, you're talking about six to nine more months before you can get to where we're at now. And, uh, and you don't know where the bonds are big, bond rates or interest rates are being so. I'm not trying to hand a new jury a, uh, a 
field or the tent, trying to be proactive and what's the best for everyone. I think that's where all of us would agree what my feelings are. We all know it's an election year. So no one can say, well, they're just doing that for election. No, because you're not going to see it. You won't see any of that before election. So let me just put that out there. I mean, there's no way an engineer or anybody could even accomplish that. All it's going to be got is what's out there right now. And well, you might get your email to ask for Sure, like to see it up the line myself. Well, I would too. Uh, I mean, I, I had asked you, about it a long time ago, and I knew the pulleys were broke. Until you get yeah. one, I mean, I just you can use it for a special occasion or whatever. See if I can get it cheaper or something. Yeah, so I mean, if you're going to fly it and have to replace it every three or four months, you need to know what that's going to cost. Yeah, because I mean, $1,000 know, a pop. I'd rather put a $1,000 dollars I think the people here would rather see a fifty thousand dollars or something else in the flag too. I'd hate to take the switch for that. Well, that's why I want to bring it to the Oh yeah, I, I don't I, want that responsibility. I say fly it till it can't fly no longer. If we can't afford it, we'll take it down. I mean, <laughs> I say uh, Bobby Hutt throw one of that flag flying, I'm gonna call Bobby. I mean the flag's been in that vault for it's probably gonna dry rock before it gets used. Yeah. It's never even been used. Well, I'm about to get used to it for a special occasion, but I definitely, you know. Carrie, what, was that two flags or just one? It was just one. That the price for a town? I believe so. I, remember. I know, you know, that one was made too. Um, I want to say that was just that one flag. That's the one back flag for that. The yellow one. Yeah. I, I don't know other than it's on the health unit. 
property, his property because his property. That we own all that. We can put anything we want to. Okay. Kind of way that's it. Now the, the National Guard furnished the last the American flag, didn't it? Well, um, Matt Miller told me the city's been buying them. Of a, de of 
of one of our well, parish inmates. I guess you could just use the parish calls today, right? No. Because we can't use we can't use a parish inmate. So you, you right. Can, you're gonna have to figure uh you know, the right. The DOC rate. The DOC rate if he's here. Oh, the well, the you, I see what you're right? saying. We could be paying it to Jackson. Yeah. Got yeah. you on here. Twenty-four thirty-nine. Okay. Seven. Yeah. Seven hundred thirty-one dollars a month. Plus my bill. He gets her. Power saw in his hand. One inmate costs seven hundred thirty-one dollars a month. No, we can't go hire somebody for that, but. <coughs> insurance, my friend. Oh, yeah. insurance on one employee will probably cost that next year. Oh, yeah. 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 Six sixty one something. I'll tell what it is. Got to go up to next year. Of course, we always have to stay. I think I lost my train of thought. Next year. Well, you've had some good ones anyway. <laughs> oh, we're all praying. I'm trying to close this game out with a, a grand slam, man. I want to walk away. I want to walk away feeling good. That way, win or lose in the fall, I'm, I still feel good either way. You were in Perry last month, now you're running chips. Jack gets some people. <laughs>